Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today I would like to talk about how to create this sweet paper organic 3D model with the Rhino 3D software. Are you ready? Let's get started. Before we started, there are actually a couple of components for this sweet paper. First, the major components, the body, I would like to show you how to get this really organic look. And then there's the steam here coming out and also this connection in between uh, the steam and the body. That's starting from the scratch. So we're going to start in the front view and then we can start drawing the profile of the green paper or the sweet paper they should look like. Basically, they will have something like that. I don't suggest you, you know, getting too big of the bump because we're going to arrange that later. So once you have that, I do want the first two points to be aligned. So I'm going to type in zero here. And then uh, so those two will be aligned. And then I also want them to be aligned to the left. So I'm going to select everybody and using the align left and just simply just type it zero here. All right. So then I can use it in a zero as an exit. Now, if you like the shape, that's okay. Go ahead to make the surface. If you don't like it, that's fine too. We're going to fine tune about it. Then I'm going to select this one and we are going to use the revolve to snapping into the endpoint to the endpoint and do 360 degree. All right. So this is more of an apple shape instead of the uh, green paper or the sweet paper. All right. So how we going to tweak it is we need to rebuild the surface. All right. So uh, in the rebuild surface, if you notice that the uh, green paper or bell paper, uh, sweet bell paper, they do have the uh, four section. I need to go with the number that can divide it by four. So for example, I'm going to go with 16 as a number. You can see it's coming up a lot, right? So ideally is you can have the number divided by four. That will be fine. Um, I simply just want to stay with the A first and then I can edit up the section uh, to specific place that I want. So I click OK. All right. Now, once we edit that, you can see it's kind of uh, uh, not fitting to our original curve. That's fine because we simplify, you know, the this uh, point and even it out. All right. So the next things I wanted to do, uh, I want to do a test for, to show you the reason I'm going to do the next step is when you turn on a control point, for example, if you pick up this one and we can use the selection tool coming over here that you can go into see this selection tool and underneath you have this lasso tool and those are allow you to select the point. All right. So this is what we're looking for. If I select one point, I can use this select V and I will select everybody at once. Right now, if I'm going to change this one by scale it down, you can see that the way that affected is actually affected a lot. Right. So another example, let me put in in the 2D drawing might be easier for you to understand. Uh, I have a circle right here and the circle. If I'm moving any of the point, you're going to get the kink. And it is the reason you get this kink right here is because this is a degree two curve, right? And I have a video talk about degree one, two, three. I'll put it on the right top corner for you to watch. Now, after I do this, if I want them to be smooth, I need to rebuild this curve, right? So let's say I'm staying with the A point, but the degree right here, I want to make sure it's turning into three. So if I change this point, you can see it get it really smooth right here. Right. But that's not all. What about when I move it? I do not want to move it so much connected to this point and this point. And the thing I can do is coming into my control point right here. I can edit up another point. So I want to add a point right here and another point right there. All right. So this point and this point is actually create to the point right in the middle. And what happened is now if I'm moving this point, you can see it will affect it to this point and this point, but not all the way to the side. Will that make sense to you? If that does make sense, it apply to this way too. In order to make that little cave in there, what we can do is we can add the insert a control point and we want to insert a control point. Let's toggle it into this way. I'm going to add one here and add another one there. All right. 
And then what it does, you can see that I creating something really pointed there. If I pick up this one and then pick up the whole thing, as you can see, I select the whole thing. I can make this one go smaller, something like this, for example. And all you will see is a key kind of a giving a crease in there. If I look at the render view right there, you see that? That will give you a little crease in there. All right, so this is what we're looking for. Now I wanted to do is insert the control point on four sections. So one here, one here, and skip one. They're going to do one here, one here. If you study the pepper a little bit, the sweet pepper a little bit, they actually have four sections there. It's like our human heart, right? Having a four section. So eating sweet paper and green paper is good for your heart but anyway come back with this one i'm going to pick up this point this point holding my shift key this point and this point all four point and then i'm in coming into the selection which is under selection tool and you have this lasso tool and then you click on this little triangle then you will get this one out and let's go ahead to click on the v and all the way to the bottom, it will be select. Okay, so let's come over here, right in the center, my top view, and I wanna scale it down a little bit, and something will be like this. All right, if you take a look on the render view, you're going to see we have something like this. And apparently this is like too uniform again, and we need to address that, right? So for example, the point right here, I actually want to move up a little bit so it doesn't look like, oh, it's like a coming, caving to the point, but we're gonna have something on the top, you know, it's going to fix it anyway. All right, so then we're gonna take a look back to the ghost view, and this is the point that you can be autistic, it's kind of play with it. So for example, right here in the middle, I may wanna have this go up a little bit, and maybe um, where right here that you do not want it to be stick it out that much, and then you want it to coming out a little bit. So it's not like, what I trying to do here is make them not as uniform, so they look like, you know, it is it's more from the nature instead of like coming out from a machine, right? And then, of course, each of them will be slightly different. Like this one, I want them to go up a little bit. This one, actually, this two point. And if you feel like uh, it doesn't look like what I want, you can just have them come back, you know, just push it back. All right, so then I will leave that to you for you to tweak. Again, if you want to crease be more, obviously you're just moving in like this. And then uh, if you feel like the whole row need to be moved, for example, I'm gonna pick up this one again, choosing the select V. And instead of using the move, you might want to use the rotation snapping into the middle. And I'm just gonna bring those out here so it doesn't look like, oh, it has a big cave in there. Okay, so you get what I mean here, and then some of the part you want them to get a little bit puffy or something like that. All right, so I'm gonna stop it here for you to play with it. The next things that we wanted to do is the steam. All right, and also we have a little things on the top. The things on the top it look like it's it's either hexagon or it's a side I think, uh, or it's octagon. So I mean I'm just going to play something like this. I'm gonna creating a six site from my poly line here and then make them really rounded. All right, so I'm going to rebuild it and then to get it a lot more point, like 16 point. So to get it a little bit more nature like this and then make them a little bit smaller. All right, and then if I just extruded this one and it will be really hard, let me show you. Uh, if I just extruded this one, it will get something like this. It doesn't look good, right? So we wanted the one on the top is puffy. So the way that I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tool for analyze and then you have mass property and then you have area centroid. So then I'm going to creating a dot right there. The dot right here, it means it is the center of my object. So I always want to group them, right? And then I want going to move that center of my object. I'm going to use the move command, or I can use the align center. I'm just going to align to my construction plane. 
All right. So then the next things I wanted to do is I'm going to draw a line right here and draw a line right there. And this is just for the reference for what the line should look like. And I'm also going to draw a line snapping into the quadrant coming down here. All right. Uh, this might be too tall compared to the object I have. I'm going to go lower right there. All right, so the way I'm going to creating a curve is using the blend tool. I'm going to blend from this end to this end, and then you get something like this. All right, I mean, you can freehand drawing if you want to, that's fine. Um, and after that, you can delete those because we no longer need them, right? So to create in the surface, we are going to use the surface tool, and you have the one for rail revolve. So this is the profile, this is the rail, and this is the axis, and then we'll get something like this. You can simply just cap the button because the button is not going to show. And then I'm going to bring this one align to the centers and then just move it up to whatever it's supposed to be. All right. And the good thing about this is if you didn't cap it, uh, you can continue to edit by pulling a control point or things like that to make them a uh, more organic shape, right? So take a look on the render view. They look something like this. All right. I think this might be crazy too much, but I'm going to stop here. Otherwise, the video going to be forever long. All right. And then the very last things that we can do is we are going to create a steam. It's going to come in over here, coming over here and something like that. Now, again, if you're using the pipe command, even though you can pipe them in like different sizes, something like that, it still looks so fake. I mean, for computer uh, gaming, it might be OK, right? Because it's not that realistic, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use this one. All right. And then this one is going to move it right in the middle as that steam and going to put it here, make it smaller, something like that. All right. So we can give it a try by using the sweep. So we're going to use a sweep one rail. This is a rail. This is the cross section. And then we got something like this. All right, so for this one, let's go go back with the ghost view right here and double make sure that is what you want there, right? All right, so if that work, work for you, we are also going to duplicate these edges and I actually want one size bigger, one size smaller. And you can actually tweak on those. I mean, if you feel like, hey, I actually don't want it to shape the same, now you can continue to tweak on it, right? So what happened is if I have a smaller shape right here and bigger shape on the top, and don't forget to ungroup that. Let me hide this one, it's easier for you to see. Uh, don't forget to ungroup that. And we want to actually moving the whole things from the point to this point. All right. And then we do want to ungroup it. We don't want to select that point. We just want to select the curve. Okay. So let's go ahead to use the sweep one, rail one, rail two, and then they are align. Make sure they are align. And then you get something like this. Okay. Now what happened if you don't align? I'm going to bring out again here and then we're going to do sweep one, rail one, rail two. What happened if I actually intentionally want to go that much of a disalign? I will actually twisting the shape. All right. And within 90 degree, I think it's like reasonable twist. Uh, and it's actually make them look nice too. All right. So you can either cap this one and fit it the edges if you want to, or you can, you know, uh, create another type of a cap if you want to. And I do have a video for different type of a cap as well. All right. So once we have this, we're going to turn on this one. We have this one. I'm just going to mirror to the other side and simply just make them smaller. And you can make them a little bit fatter if you want to. And then so that will give an ending to the bottom as well. And then that will be our sweet paper. And if you like them, you can copy paste. So like what I had there and to do your rendering. I hope you enjoyed the video. I have a lot more tricks and tips I wanted to share with you. Please join my membership that I will show you more of my secret. Thank you for watching and I will see you next.